Left-Wing Communism, an Infantile Disorder, by V.I. Lenin. Chapter 2, An Essential Condition of the Bolshevik Success. It is, I think, almost universally realized at present that the Bolsheviks could not have retained power for two and a half months, let alone two and a half years, without the most rigorous and truly iron discipline in our party, or without the fullest and unreserved support from the entire mass of the working class, that is, from all thinking, honest, devoted, and influential elements in it, capable of leading the backward strata or carrying the latter along with them. The dictatorship of the proletariat means a most determined and most ruthless war waged by the new class against a more powerful enemy, the bourgeoisie, whose resistance is increased tenfold by their overthrow, and whose power lies not only in the strength of international capital, the strength and durability of their international connections, but also in the force of habit, in the strength of small-scale production. Unfortunately, Small-scale production is still widespread in the world, and small-scale production engenders capitalism and the bourgeois continuously, daily, hourly, spontaneously, and on a mass scale. All these reasons make the dictatorship of the proletariat necessary, and victory over the bourgeoisie is impossible without a long, stubborn, and desperate life-and-death struggle which calls for tenacity, discipline, and a single and inflexible will. I repeat, the experience of the victorious dictatorship of the proletariat in Russia has clearly shown, even to those who are incapable of thinking or have had no occasion to give thought to the matter, that absolute centralization and rigorous discipline of the proletariat are an essential condition of victory over the bourgeoisie. This is often dwelt on. However, not nearly enough thought is given to what it means and under what conditions it is possible. Would it not be better if the salutations addressed to the Soviets and the Bolsheviks were more frequently accompanied by a profound analysis of the reasons why the Bolsheviks have been able to build up the discipline needed by the revolutionary proletariat? As a current of political thought and as a political party, Bolshevism has existed since 1903. Only the history of Bolshevism during the entire period of its existence can satisfactorily explain why it has been able to build up and maintain, under most difficult conditions, the iron discipline needed for the victory of the proletariat. The first questions to arise are, how is the discipline of the proletariat's revolutionary party maintained? How is it tested? How is it reinforced? First, by the class consciousness of the proletarian vanguard and by its devotion to the revolution, by its tenacity, self-sacrifice, and heroism. Second, by its ability to link up, maintain the closest contact, and, if you wish, merge, in certain measure, with the broadest masses of the working people, primarily with the proletariat, but also with the non-proletarian masses of working people. Third, by the correctness of the political leadership exercised by this vanguard, by the correctness of its political strategy and tactics, provided the broad masses have seen, from their own experience, that they are correct. Without these conditions, discipline in a revolutionary party really capable of being the party of the advanced class, whose mission it is to overthrow the bourgeoisie and transform the whole of society, cannot be achieved. Without these conditions, all attempts to establish discipline inevitably fall flat and end up in phrase-mongering and clowning. On the other hand, these conditions cannot emerge at once. They are created only by prolonged effort and hard-won experience. 
Their creation is facilitated by a correct revolutionary theory, which, in its turn, is not a dogma, but assumes final shape only in close connection with the practical activity of a truly mass and truly revolutionary movement. The fact that in 1917 to 1920, Bolshevism was able, under unprecedentedly difficult conditions, to build up and successfully maintain the strictest centralization in iron discipline was due simply to a number of historical peculiarities of Russia. On the one hand, Bolshevism arose in 1903 on a very firm foundation of Marxist theory. The correctness of this revolutionary theory, and of it alone, has been proved not only by world experience throughout the 19th century, but especially by the experience of the seekings and vacillations, the errors and disappointments of revolutionary thought in Russia. For about half a century, approximately from the 40s to the 90s of the last century, progressive thought in Russia, oppressed by a most brutal and reactionary czarism, sought eagerly for a correct revolutionary theory, and followed with the utmost diligence and thoroughness each and every last word in this sphere in Europe and America. Russia achieved Marxism, the only correct revolutionary theory, through the agony she experienced in the course of half a century of unparalleled torment and sacrifice, of unparalleled revolutionary heroism, incredible energy, devoted searching, study, practical trial, disappointment verification, and comparison with European experience. Thanks to the political emigration caused by Tsarism, revolutionary Russia, in the second half of the 19th century, acquired a wealth of international links and excellent information on the forms and theories of the world revolutionary movement, such as no other country possessed. On the other hand, Bolshevism, which had arisen on this granite foundation of theory, went through 15 years of practical history, unequaled anywhere in the world in its wealth of experience. During those 15 years, no other country knew anything even approximating to that revolutionary experience, that rapid and varied succession of different forms of the movement, legal and illegal, peaceful and stormy underground and open, local circles and mass movements, and parliamentary and terrorist forms. In no other country has there been concentrated, in so brief a period, such a wealth of forms, shades, and methods of struggle of all classes of modern society, a struggle which, owing to the backwardness of the country and the severity of the czarist yoke, matured with exceptional rapidity, and assimilated most eagerly and successfully the appropriate last word of American and European political experience.